Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to give you a demo of new features included in Android 4.4, and I'll be using the Google Nexus 5 phone. So this is just new features uh, included in Android 4.4, <clears throat> and we'll start with the lock screen. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that it's swiping to unlock is the same. However, it's a lot more easy to notice that you can actually swipe here from the bottom up to access Google Now. It was always possible, it's just now it's a bit easier to notice because they have an arrow. When you tap on it, you swipe up to activate Google Now. Um, it's also easier to notice that you can activate the camera from the lock screen by tapping on this icon here or simply swiping from the edge of the screen over. It's a lot easier than Android 4.3 was because it didn't have this icon here at the bottom corner for the camera. Now you, you can't customize the widgets uh, right out of the box. You'll notice that I can't do anything. That has to be changed in a uh, system security setting. I'll show you how to do that shortly. The Android stock home screen itself is very, very simplified. It's a lot more cleaner than it's ever been and icons are a lot larger. Here you'll notice at the, at the bottom, the dock app icons, it's, uh, there's, there's no background. It's just there, very clean. And um, you know, as for the notification drawer, you'll notice that it's kind of transparent. It kind of shadows up near the top of the edge, but for the most part, it's transparent. You'll notice that the icons here have been changed to a plain white, like the Wi-Fi, cell notification, uh, sorry, status, and all that good stuff. So the stock screen is very, very clean, which is a good thing, but it's also kind of a bad thing. I'll explain why. As for the app drawer, icons are very, very big, and it's, the system, it, just, it looks great, it looks very clean. You'll notice that you can't access widgets in the app drawer anymore. Uh, Google has reverted back to Android 2.3 and older, I believe, where to access widgets, now you have to long press on your screen and press widgets here at the bottom. Now, one of the things I don't like about uh, stock, this is the Nexus 5, it might be different on other Android devices when they get Android 4.4, is that you have a right screen, a middle screen, and the left screen is always Google Now. Now, <clears throat> this is very good because you can access it quickly, but there are other methods to access Google Now very quickly. So you can swipe to the left, as I demonstrated, and of course you can long press on the home button and swipe up. And exclusive to the Nexus 5, if you're anywhere on the home screen, you can say, OK, Google. And as you notice, Google Now opens. Let's just close that. Now, one of the things I didn't like is how it's not that uh, user friendly to new users to Android because basically you only have two screens because the third one is taken up by Google Now. Well, in order to add another home screen, it's not that difficult, but it's not really mentioned anywhere too clearly. You have to go to your app store. Uh, let's just say I want to grab uh, Chess Free and I have to drag it over. And there, I've created a four screen. One of the cool things about Android 4.4 is that it's designed to work on slower phones. So if your phone has 512 megabytes of RAM or higher, you can technically run Android 4.4. Ironically, Google did not release it for the Galaxy Nexus. One of the things that's been changed about text messaging is that in stock Android, SMS messaging and uh, Google chatting, like on Google Plus or Gmail on your desktop computer, have been integrated into one app. Now, this might vary depending on uh, if you're running, say, um, a Samsung device. If they release Android 4.4, they might not have the same system, but for the most part, it works like this. You open up your Hangouts app, and here you have a list of contacts. You can add more. Oops, you can search Google Plus contacts. You can search phone contacts. And from here, say, for my wife, I have her on Hangouts and text messaging, obviously. I can choose between sending her a text or sending her a Hangout message. Perhaps my favorite feature of Android 4.4 is the new dialing system. So you have your phone app, uh, you have your three most contacted people here at the top. Um, you have all contacts by tapping all contacts, the dialer, tapping on this timer here is your frequent call list, and then of course options. But my favorite part here is dialing businesses. So say for example, I wanna look for a burger joint. I'm gonna go to search, I'm gonna type Burger. And what it's doing now is actually searching Google Maps for places nearby with the name Burger in it. And as you can see, it's found three nearby places. So I can actually call Burger King right by typing that uh, location right there and then. Let's say, for example, uh, a Pizza Hut is calling me. Maybe something about my delivery is running late. So I don't have Pizza Hut in my contacts list. But what will happen is because their information might be on Google Maps, It'll say Pizza Hut is calling you and then here's a phone number. And if their business has an icon on Google Maps, their icon will be their call a display thing. So that's actually one of the coolest features of Android 4.4 is that Google Maps 
uh, business information is integrated in the phone dialer. As for the downloads app, it has been changed. It's a lot more cleaner. As you see, I have nothing downloaded. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but it's a lot cleaner of a UI. And as for the email app, it looks a lot more similar to, say, the Gmail app. It's been refreshed and it's swiping down here will refresh your emails. If you're going to play a song through the Google Play Music app, when you lock your screen, uh, basically what happens is on your lock screen, you actually have control over what's playing. If you have album art, it'll show up in the background, which I don't have for this song. You can play, pause, go to the next track, previous track. You can use the volume rockers to control the volume and long pressing on the play pause button will bring up the seek track. So you can actually comp control what's being played right from your lock screen. A long requested feature is that for certain apps, say like Google Play Books, is that if you're reading a book, just as an example, it could work with other apps, you'll notice that everything disappears off the screen. To bring everything back, like a control buttons, your notification bars, simply tap on the screen and it all returns. And simply tapping back again will make it all disappear. So you're getting more screen space for if you're reading a book or if you're using another app that supports this feature called immersive mode. Of course, multitasking speed has been vastly improved, uh, but that shouldn't be much of a surprise considering that you know Android 4.4 works on newer devices, but for older devices, it should increase the speed uh, according to Google. So a big pet peeve people have is that when they're playing a game or something, you know, you can get a text message and you have to exit the app in order to find out what was that message or who was it from. It's very annoying. Not anymore with Android 4.4. What you can basically do is, as you'll notice, I don't have access to my notification drawer, but I have my controller buttons here. If I simply swipe down from the top, my notification drawer shows up. Swipe down again and I bring down my notification drawer. And this works even if the screen is rotated if you're playing a landscape game. So it's a really neat feature. Uh, you might notice I have an update waiting for me. It's most likely Android 4.4.2. I'm not going to activate it because I will um, be flashing signage in Mod 11, so just ignore that. A couple of things that I can't really demonstrate for you guys, but is included in Android 4.4 is cloud printing. If you have a printer, say, from HP, and they have an HP uh, cloud printing app and supports cloud printing in your home, then you can do it. That's features in, kind of included in Android 4.4. You also have Bluetooth map support, which basically if your car has Bluetooth built in, it can relay messages to your car and etc. The GPS battery consumption mode has been altered greatly, and it's for the better. I personally always have battery saving mode always on so it can grab information from Google Now. If I'm using the, di the dialer to search, say, a, a burger joint like I did earlier, it'll grab the information for me without consuming too much battery. However, if I'm using something like uh, Google Maps while I'm driving and I need navigation mode, they can always activate high accuracy mode, which consumes more battery, but it's you know a necessity in that term of situation. So GPS can always be left on and it consumes a lot less battery if you want it to. Now the system settings menu hasn't changed too much. There are some subtle features here and there. Of course, one of the cool, well, often requested features is selecting your default SMS app under wireless and networks. So say I have Hangouts as my default SMS app, but I also want to install Handsent SMS. Well, what will happen is if I receive a text message, I'll get an alert from Hangouts and Handsent SMS in my notification drawer, which is extremely annoying. Now, if I simply go to this option and selecting Handsent SMS, if I had it, for example, it would stop all notifications from Hangouts and only activate SMS notifications from Handsent. Uh, a feature that's been requested long overdue. Another one that's actually been way overdue, in my opinion, is also selecting your default home screen. As you can see, I have the default launcher activated for this demo video, but usually I have Nova Launcher. Once I select Nova Launcher, it becomes my default home screen without having to go through a whole bunch of annoying menus to find. There's a feature called Tap and Pay, which I personally haven't activated because up here in Canada, we don't really have too many NFC payment options yet. It's started to be implemented, so I can't really go through that for you guys. As mentioned, the widgets in the lock screen can be added and customized. You just have to go to security. And as you can see, it has screen security. All I have to do is press enable widgets, and there you can customize stuff so you're phone security, your lock screen security, and all the other good stuff. If we were to scroll all the way to the bottom, as I mentioned about cloud printing, here's the option built in. Some printers might require a third-party app, as I mentioned before. Now, there is something called closed captioning available on the phone, which apparently works uh, across most of the system. If you go to accessibility, and here you can turn captions on and off. Uh, according to Google, this is a new feature. I have tried using it on multiple apps. It does not work for me. Uh, so I personally couldn't get it to work, but according to Google, it's a new feature, so I just had to mention that for you guys. Included in Android 4.4 is an app called Photos, which I believe was supposed to be a replacement app for the gallery because in Nexus 5 devices, you get the Photos app and the Gallery app, but apparently new Nexus devices being released on Google Play or Google Play Edition devices like the LG uh, 8.3 8 tablet, I believe, 
Google has gotten rid of the gallery and now it's solely the photos app. So I think um, this is the new default photo app or gallery app, whatever you want to call it, in the near future and the gallery will be phased away slowly. Uh, I think I have covered most of the features, if not all. Well, at least the important ones anyway. And I hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, Android 4.4 is not a huge, huge change from Android 4.3, but it is a welcomed one in my opinion. So if you guys found this video useful, be sure to check my Facebook, Google+, Twitter links in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.